What's up everyone? Welcome back to WX Garage. This video is going to be really cool because it's gonna be on a car that you guys haven't seen yet on the channel. It is our friend's red cross track here. Um, I know a lot of you guys are here for some WRX content, but we are branching out more and more to other platforms. Um, but this one is really cool. We have a another head unit install. It's the Android iDoing head unit. It's their newest version, the 2020 model, the 2021 model. Um, so it's gonna be going into our friend's Crosstrek here. We're gonna be giving them the ability to do Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, either one, whatever they want. Um, it's gonna be really, really cool, really seamless because iDoing makes a great kit. Uh, we did one of these in the past already um, but we're gonna take it a little bit slower this time and show you guys um, you know how to wire everything how everything works so uh, yeah all right so first things first came in really good packaging comes with even the pop-up tools which is really cool let's get things out of the plastic Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, so here we are in the cross truck. Um, this is a 2016 base model. Um, so very, you know, very, very simple uh, head unit here. Um, but what's great is the I doing uh, one will just uh, replace all of these individual buttons, all these controls, the vents, everything we're going to be swapping over. Um, this screen is not very, uh, it's, it's, it's capacitive touch. Uh, it's not a normal touch screen, so um, it does get a little annoying. It's pretty slow, and worst of all, the audio is just very, very bad. So uh, we're going to be fixing all of that today. Um, the stock head unit uh, has a very, very underpowered amp from Subaru, so it's only like seven amps um, uh, RMS, so or seven watts RMS to all the speakers, but the new iDoing one, I think it's up to 25 watts RMS to each speaker, which is amazing. So uh, we're gonna be replacing this. Um, very similar to um, our other one, our other head unit. It's just, uh, you remove the glove box. It's one big 10, 10 millimeter bolt under there, one underneath the steering column down here in the back. You just need a couple extensions to get to it. And then you can just pop this top piece out with some panel tray panels, uh, panel poppers, whatever you wanna call them. Pop this out. Um, and then bolt, bolt, pull this out. So pretty simple. Once we do that, I'll show you guys uh, how everything is wired. The head unit is out. Um, a couple interesting things about this model. It is a 2015, not a 2016, sorry. Um, it does have two uh, analog wires to control these two AC units. So make sure you go under where you undid those two bolts on either side and just pop these out and off of the controls so that you can pull the head unit out a lot more smoothly. Um, now we're just gonna be swapping over the AC controls to the new iDoing unit. Um, so it's just a couple screws in the back here. One, two, three, four, two on each side, and then we'll swap it over. Super, super uh, swap over guys. You're just doing the AC controls, four bolts back on to the back of the iDoing head unit here. Uh, just because it's been kind of windy, um, I decided to just do everything and then show you guys afterwards. So a couple pretty straightforward things. One, you have this plug here, which goes down in, looks like that, just straight there. Pretty much for every single plug you're putting in the back, it is uh, has a little diagram like this, about where it's supposed to go in the back of the head unit. Um, and every, th every single plug has a, um, a little, if you can see they have these little splines that are all unique. So it's pretty much impossible to put the wrong plug in in the wrong location. Um, I'm pretty sure all of this harness is kind of unnecessary because it, um, it uses aftermarket. Um, if you have an aftermarket camera that would go into this wire here, um, everything else will just be automatically routed through uh, the normal plugs, which are gonna go right there, uh, which is the, all the same harness. All these harnesses are all gonna be going straight back into here. Um, one thing you do have to plug in is this orange connection. 
Um, again, it's pretty hard to miss because it, they, they look like they perfectly line up because they do. Uh, this is for your radio antenna, I believe. Um, it's just from one end of this harness into the back of this one right there. So you have to do that. Um, this is where your microphone is going to connect. Um, we are putting it right behind the steering column here, right there. Um, this is going to be sheltered from any wind noise or anything when the windows open, which is nice. Um, then we routed it underneath the steering column over and it's coming out right here. Uh, the other option you have is um, you can route it uh, all the way up. You can pop this out up the A pillar and it would come out right here. Um, so we're going to do some sound, some sound testing. If we have to reroute it, it's not that big of a deal. Um, as for some other connections, um, these plugs all right here are all going to go into the back of these stock ones right there. So these three go into three of these. And then the last remaining ones are all of the different USBs. So the USBs we're going to route into the glove box. Um, we're going to try to connect it to the center console here. There is a way to do that, but I didn't figure it out on my car. A lot of pe people have been asking about that. So um, we're just going to wrap them into the glove box. And if there's an issue, then we'll see. So, oh, really quick. So the other thing I forgot to show you guys, uh, we got the backs of the vents in and the emergency button or the emergency signal button switched over. So the vent controls are all working super, super easy. You just take them out of the old one, pop them in the new one. Um, the, oh, last connection is the GPS loom here and then all the 4G. Um, I use the GPS one, which is has a little magnet. It's gonna mount right on the top right there. Um, I don't know if when you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, if it defaults to using the GP onboard GPS module, so that's why I have it connected. But the 4G ones, so there's 4G main and 4G auxiliary. And there's also one more connection it comes with um, for a SIM card. Um, this is really important, guys. If you're planning on using all of the all of your phone for the basic functions for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay for all of this, then you don't need to use any of those three. You don't need the, the two 4G harnesses or the antennas or the uh, harness for the, or the plug for the, um, the SIM card. If you plan on using the onboard navigation on this unit and you're buying a SIM card for this and you're buying a, essentially a SIM card plan because it's using mobile data, you can do that. Otherwise, just uh, don't use those and you can just use your phone's mobile data through this head unit through Apple CarPlay or uh, Android Auto. So let's get this installed and I'll show you guys some of the connections once we have it right there. So um, we got everything buttoned up. Uh, another quick thing that I completely forgot to mention is whenever you're doing electrical work on a car like this, always disconnect your battery so you notice our hood's up. Um, always disconnect at least the, ne the, uh, the negative side of the battery just so you don't have any issues with any um, of your fuses or anything like that. Um, the bezel isn't seated all the way in yet because we're just testing it, but we just have everything on. As you can see, Apple CarPlay is up. Uh, we can use uh, Google Maps. We can play some music. I'm not going to because I don't like, uh, you know, getting copyright striked, but... Uh, <laughs> um, and what's really cool is you can bring up all of your recent apps just like that. Let's do a... Oops. Let's go back to Apple CarPlay. And as you can see, everything still works, which is great. Just gotta do those connections up there, but. So some of the just absolute basic functions, guys. Um, this is the, here, let me change my, uh, there we go, a little bit easier. So this is the home screen. Everything looks uh, really nice and bright. A um, Couple of things, first, does rev the reverse camera work? Yes, it does. Works perfectly. Um, no issues at all. Back to park. Um, this is set up now for uh, Apple CarPlay. So all our friend has to do is plug her phone right into here. 
simple. Put our phone right there in the cup holder or down in the cup, the uh, thing down here. And everything works. All of her AC controls work. Everything works great. Um, audio quality sounds really, really good. Um, like we showed the, with the navigation, that works great as well. Um, this has a one button equalizer. So a couple quick, easy buttons for bass enhancement like this. We have this full, long, um, <laughs> this really, really in-depth equalizer here. Sorry, I'm getting my reflection in here a little bit. Um, I have some sunlight coming in, but um, very simple, easy to use. Tune it to how you like it. There are some preset profiles right here by changing from user drop down menu. There is rock, classic, jazz, etc. So you can change some of the use some of the presets if you want. Definitely, the speakers definitely, definitely sound some sound really good. So, so everything is all set here. I, like I said, everything works great. Let me see if I can. Um, this work. This is Android, by the way. So if you have uh, two different people with two different phones, you have the same car. You can just use two of the different USBs and switch between the connections, uh, which is amazing. Um, let me open up YouTube, see if I can find some royalty-free music and play some music for you guys. All right, so we got some royalty-free hip-hop playing. Let's turn the music up. So compared to before, the audio quality is already so much better. You can just hear how much smoother and stronger the audio being driven to each of the speakers is. So let's see if we can change the equalizer here a little bit. Just for the subwoofer, I think. So just keeping this pretty flat sounds really good to me. Go back to Carling, and everything works seamlessly. Awesome. So we have everything um, all buttoned up. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you guys that a lot of people asked about with our last our last uh, I doing video was um, how to close up. They said it didn't have good fitment. Um, you know, I think people were having issues because they weren't able to line things up correctly. Um, as you guys can see here, there's still this gap at the top. Let's see if I can show you that. Um, I haven't, just because I'm making sure and testing all the connections, I haven't put it all the way in. So let me just click that in and show you guys how I do that because um, I didn't have any issue on my car when I did it, but um, some people are having issue with not having their bezels line up. Um, so I'll do that right now. So like I said before, all you have to do is kind of just work your way up. So I just put pressure here and here, and then a little bit higher here and here, and then in the corners and it, each of those little clips pop in and then you get a nice even bezel. So no gaps, nice and clean, super simple. So if you guys want a, you know, a pretty seamless um, replacement for your head unit where you're increasing the audio quality really easily, iDoing is the one for you. Uh, we'll put the link to this exact model for the 2016 Crosstrek. Um, they have, it's very similar for the ones for the Outback too. So um, you'll have to really test it out, but, um, but which one is which? Um, but like I said, they have it for the Crosstrek, the uh, Outback, the Forester, and the WRX. And I'm pretty sure for the Imprezas and Legacies as well, I'll have to look into that. But like I said, link down in the description from iDoing for this kit. 
super seamless, super simple. Everything works perfectly. So uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, see you next week.